yeah so guys let's uh, we were discussing about like a few real time examples right so we just wanted to understand like when exactly these kind of control statements happen for example like uh, when when do you actually go to college like in the morning let's say it is a monday do you uh, check whether it is a sunday or monday or like based on that will you decide or how exactly will it happen going to college so going to college is an action but when should it happen should it happen every day it should not happen every day so what is the condition that we are checking here are we checking whether it is only sunday or something else are we checking only whether the day is sunday or not yes or no so like whenever you are uh, you wanted to go to college first thing you will check is whether it is a, a sunday or not and then there are few more conditions right what are the conditions whether it is a holiday or not am i right or will you directly go to college and then check whether it is working or not we will see first whether it is a holiday or not and then we will decide it right similarly like if you wanted uh, if you have a remote and you uh, like you wanted to watch tv first thing what will you do will you directly uh, like switch on the tv or will you check whether the tv is on or off if the tv is already on do you need to uh, turn on the tv again we don't need to turn on the tv right it is already on similarly let's take if you wanted to watch some uh, like uh, some channel maybe let's say discovery so you will uh, first what will you check whether the current channel is discovery or not am i right if it is discovery do you need to uh, switch the channel again it is not necessary right because you are already there so similarly like everywhere even in our real life also like we do certain actions based on certain conditions we do this only when certain condition is met am i right now let's take another example like i have to go to hospital what is the condition based on what condition like should i go to hospital if i am sick right or otherwise if someone from our family members are sick so there are certain conditions that uh, will decide whether you have to do this action or not right similarly let's take like a uh, normal examination for example if uh, like let's say you are going for an exam do you need to carry your hall ticket or not will you carry hall ticket each and every day when you go to college no so what is the condition over here whether it is an exam day or not right so specifically based on certain criteria we are deciding whether should we uh, do certain action or not right and sometimes we even do a kind of loop uh, actions like repeated actions for example uh, we'll just go back to the one which we discussed rice cooker how do you actually uh, like switch off uh, the stove when exactly should we do that you are cooking rice in a rice cooker when do you actually turn off the stove it will be based on the number of whistles or based on the time like there are multiple factors right or will you just go and uh, like uh, turn on and turn off immediately we won't do that we will have a certain criteria right similarly let's take uh, you are going for a gym and you wanted to do like uh, maybe uh, 10 push ups how do you do that will you just randomly keep doing push ups and then uh, say that like okay 10 are done or will you keep a count continuously till 10 are done we will use a count right so whenever you wanted to do certain action like in a specific number of times like uh, 10 times what we do we start counting it like one one is completed next two and then three keep like we do that continuously until certain number of times like 10 times 25 times it depends on the individual choice right now this is like uh, one kind of way where we are uh, using repeated actions when with a specific count sometimes we do not uh, keep a count but we will do uh, things repeatedly any example any repeated action without using a count is there anything of that kind
Sure, no? Any uh, Anyone, any uh, example that you can think of? For example, you, uh, let's say you are browsing Instagram, okay? And then suddenly the net is not working. What will you do? Will you just keep waiting for it or will you do something else? You'll try to pull to refresh and then try to refresh the data. Am I right? Will you try to refresh the data or will you just keep waiting on the screen, empty screen? You'll try to refresh, right? So how, when exactly we are trying to do this action, which is like refresh. Again, here also we have a condition. If there is no data, if the screen is empty, then we are trying to do the refresh, right? And how many times, uh, like, uh, we are doing the refresh thing? Are we doing only once? Are we doing only once? Till it comes, right? So there is no, uh, like, a count that is associated with this refresh. Some people might do it for three times. Some people might do it for 10 times. So it can actually, like, it can be a different uh, information, right? It depends on our patients also, and it depends on our urgency. So based on that, we will do like three times, five times, 10 times. And sometimes we think that, okay, the problem is somewhere else, and then we'll stop doing it here, right? So this way, uh, we will actually perform a same action multiple times until certain condition is met. The condition might be based on the count, or it might be based on like certain result, or it might be something else, right? Let's take like we have uh, two uh, like boxes of products. Now we wanted to transfer all the products from first box to second box. So now, do we, are we doing any repeated action here? Yes, we are doing. We, are, we will take first item from the box one, and then we'll put it in the box two. And we'll take second item, put it in the box uh, two. And how many times do we repeat this? Is there any specific number or like how? Or what is the condition here? Till it, uh, yeah. Is there any condition? Till the box is completely empty, right? Whether it is a small box or large box, it doesn't matter. Like the condition will always be same. Until the box is empty, the first box is empty, you'll keep doing this, right? So there are many places where we actually do this kind of repeated work. And like whenever we say repeated work, we actually call it as loop, right? Even like the normal term, what does it, uh, loop mean? Loop means doing something over and over again until some uh, something happens, until like some condition is met, right? So now, same thing, similar things, we actually use it in our programming also. Let's take a, a small technical example. You're transferring one file from your machine to other machine. Let's take a movie. And uh, let's say like maybe the size is around 800 MB. How much time does it take to transfer a 800 MB file from one system to other system? How much time does it take, guys, approximately? You're transferring one movie from your system to your friend's uh, system. How much time does it take? Few minutes. Okay. In case if the file is bigger, let's say 5 GB, how much time does it take? It will take a little longer, right? It might take 20, 10 minutes, 20 minutes and all. So it all depends on the data. <coughs> Sorry. So now let's try to relate this with the first example, which we discussed. We have two boxes where we are transferring content from one box to other box. So now here, what are we doing? Are we doing like full file at uh, once or are we taking like each, uh, like what is it, small amount of data from one file to other file? How does it work? It works with small content. Like if you have like one file, which is of 5 GB, what do we do? We take one KB of information, send it over uh, to the next uh, play, uh, system. And then like once that is done, then we'll start with the second packet, right? Each packet is nothing but one uh, KB of information. It's not necessarily one KB, it can be of any size. We are just dividing it into smaller packets. And then we do this continuously over time. And until when should we do this? Until what time should we do this? Until all the packets are completed, all the packets are transferred, right? 
So in case if it is 5 GB, we will divide 5 GB by 1000 uh, bytes. Based on that, we will get a count. So until that count uh, is actually being transferred, we will keep doing this task continuously, right? So are we using a concept of loop here? Do something over and over continuously until like a certain condition is met. Now, let's take one more example. Uh, let's say if you wanted to, uh, you wanted to, uh, you have got the results and you wanted to say like who got distinction, who got uh, like first uh, class marks and all. How do we calculate them? For example, if a person got like 80%, is it distinction or is it first class? 80%. Distinction, if it is distinction, type D. If it is first class, type F. If a person got 80%, is it distinction or first class? Okay, let's take 85%, just to avoid confusion. 85%, is it first class or distinction? So usually whenever you get more than 80%, it is distinction. So now 85%, is it distinction or first class? Or is it a failure? It is distinction. If a person gets 75%, then, then what should happen? If a person gets 75%, is it first class or distinction? It is first class, right? So based on this information, we actually try to understand like how uh, like uh, the control actually works. So we'll try to do a small example and then we'll uh, see like how to use the same concept in our project also. Let me uh, share my screen. So now, whatever the example that we were discussing, let's take just marks. Marks means usually what data type should we use? Now, first, as we uh, did earlier, we'll try to write all the code and then we'll go uh, through each level. I wanted to print distinction for the first, uh, like top people, right? So let me just write a uh, print statement for that. And then for the first class, I wanted to print first class. And if it is less than first class, I'll say just pass. Now, how many lines do we have here? We have four different lines, right? So now you guys tell me whether uh, like for every marks, should I execute all these four lines or not? For example, if it is 75, if I run, what will happen? What will be the output? All the four will be printed. Let's try to run and see once. All the four are printed, but is it correct? Printing all the four uh, different states for one particular uh, person marks, it is not. So what should happen? Ideally, which one should be printed? Only the first class should be printed. So how are we going to do that? So just like how we talk in English, we have a few keywords in like uh, programming languages also. And we use that as if, for example, Let's take if marks are greater than 80, greater than or equal to. So we are using a comparison also here. And then this should happen. 
So now if you try to read it, if this particular condition is true, then only line number 8 will be executed. Otherwise, it will never get executed. So what happens? After line number 5, we are checking for line number 7. If this condition is true, then it will go to line number 8. If it is not true, then it will go to the end of this brace, which is line number 9. And then it will continue from here. So we will see what will be the output now. Yes. Now, distinction is not displayed. We got only three elements. What should we do next? Now, should we display first class for everyone? We should not display first class for everyone, right? Only for people who got more than 60 and less than 80. Only for them, we have to display this. So, I'll write another condition here. This line should get displayed only for people with 60 to 80 marks. So, let me do that. If marks is greater than or equal to 60 and so I'm combining two different conditions now if you see marks is less than 80 so this condition line number 11 will get executed only when marks are between 60 and 80 shall we try say So now, distinction is not displayed. First class is displayed. And then, we are still uh, displaying the just pass and failure. So what should be the conditions for this? For just pass, what should be the range? It should be between marks greater than or equal to 35. And it should be less than 60 also, right? Marks should be less than 60. So this is a syntax for if condition. So whenever you say if, like we are actually saying that only uh, execute these lines if the condition is true. Now let us see what will be the output. Even just pass is also gone. And when should we display failure? If marks are less than 35, right? Now let's try to run this again. So now. If you see here, like finally, we have got overall four uh, different words. And then, like uh, we are displaying it based on certain conditions. So now, just try to uh, think and analyze, will there be any uh, specific marks where we are going to display multiple items? Distinction of first class together. Allah, uh, you display a chance on the manaki? We don't display that uh, way, right? So if it is 80 plus, it will always be only this line. If it is between 60 to 80, it will be first class. So that way, we have given a specific conditions, right? So now, let's try to uh, like see why we call this as control statements. We call them as control statements. As a control and the what is it actually controlling, right? If they are saying some term, there will be some reason for it. So the reason here is it is a control of flow. And the execution A line the A line decide what any control statements under. And in control statements, we have like different types: conditional and loops. Manam, you put choose the conditions or loops. What is this? Conditions or loops? These are conditions because we are just checking for certain conditions and then moving to the next lines. Are they loops and in that repeated gun? We will go to that also. So now if you see here, we'll try to understand which A line the A line First, when the program execution starts, which line will be executed? Can you guys tell me which line will be executed first? Total program law. It is going to be 5 because 5 is the first line inside the main method. main method start out the fifth line is the first line. And after fifth line, what is the next line? Guys, everyone try to type in so that you will get clarity on how the control works now. Already just try to uh, uh, just participate and interact so that next chapter when complex problems, this fundamental uh, will actually help a lot. Now, after 5, which line will execute? Sixth line, uh, sixth line, do we have any code? We don't have. So, sixth line ignored. Seventh line will get executed. 
seventh line no it is a condition so seventh line will decide whether the controls sh should go to eighth line or tenth line so now seventh line no we are have a condition whether it is true or false on line number 7 is it true or false it is false since marks are 75 75 greater than or equal to 8 and it is not true it is false so where should we go now should it go to 8 or 10 we have to go to 10 now again this condition is it true or false line number 10 it is true where should we go next we have to go to line number 11 then 11 is completed it printed first class where should it go next after 11 since the if block is completely done it goes to 13th line and now 13th line is it true or false it is false so where will it go next 16th line yes and after 16th is it true or false it is false so where where, where will it go next after this if condition there is nothing else right so the program is completely completed it is done so do we have any other next line to go no we don't have any other line to go for further right so the, this is how we are actually defining the control of the flow and ipudu manam edaithe ee control chustunnamo this might be look very very simple example right but same uh, concept we use it at very very large scales also like even ipudu meer use chese uh, like big products like google can facebook can everywhere we use these kind of concepts the concept is going from one place to other place and how do you go there that's it condition saying these are the primary things we will always look at okay is it clear everyone any questions so far so we have discussed like one concept which is if condition if condition ante it will decide whether true or false any uh, condition based chesko it will go to some other place right now let's try to optimize this code further for example first if condition ki second if condition ki is there any relation line number 7 lo unna condition ki line number 10 lo unna condition ki there is no relation seventh line true aina false aina tenth line will definitely get executed right ala kaakunda actually if you see ee four lo edaina okati maatrame manaku output raavachu am i right distinction kaani first class kaani just pass kaani failure kaani is there any possibility where we get two or more uh, options as output there is no such uh, possibility like it will always be only one option right alantappudu manaku okka vela let's say if the marks are like 75 ikkada any times execute ayindi chudandi this is the first line one ex one line second line third line fourth line right idu ayithin tarvata next malli ee line kuda execute ayindi but okka vela manaki if you know that it is first class do we need to check these lines man already first class ani telisi teliste do we need to check the other conditions we don't need right so ilante appudu we have one more condition which is like again just normal uh, english terminology if and else ante for example we are connecting these if conditions basically in case ee condition true ayind anukondi you know that distinction will come that's fine but If it falls, I then the next condition check chale and kona. But we just write something like else if so. Now, if you see, we have created a connection between both the uh, if statements. For example, let's say marks are ninety five. What will happen? Will it go to line number seven? Marks are ninety five. Will it go to line number seven? Yes, it will. And after that, will it go to line number eight? Will it go to line number eight? Yes. And then after line number eight, will it go to line number nine? It won't go to line number nine because already first condition true. I can cover it. The else thing we have to do. And will it go to line number ten? 
hit phone code. Will it go to line number 12? Yes, because there is no relation between the top if else conditions and this if condition. We did put a relation per calendar. What should we do? We have to do else if. Simple. Then you put a connection. I put I want uh, to put for this also. What should we do? Else if. So now if you see, it is a kind of ladder actually. Continuous. It will ignore. If this is executed, will it go? What is the next line? Is executed in the next line? Should we check for else if? Just with line number 8, the control is completely done here. Program execution is completed. Marks greater than or equal to 80 fail in that quantity. Then it will go for else if. Otherwise, it will never go to the else if condition at all. Right? So now, let's try to uh, see how uh, this particular flow also works. I'm just running it. Distinction actually. Done. If I give 65, uh, what will be the output? We got first class. If I give like 55, we got just pass, right? If I give less than 35, we got failure. Is it working fine, everyone? Yes, it is working fine. But can we break this particular flow? Manik Okavela, 0 to 100 ka kunda, inka vary than a number of chin and input. What will happen? Shall we test it? For example, let's say I got 120 marks. What will happen? Ideal gain level 120 and 100 ki 120 What should happen? Is it correct? Ah, it could output a yedos than a cup. Ideal gain Ravali. Real life flow, 120 ochna pretty injured. Right? Anyone? When you get an invalid number, exactly, it should be like kind of invalid, right? So now let us see if it works or not. Distinction ochna, which is wrong. So what should we do? I like it. Let me give a negative value, minus 10. What should happen? Minus 10 and reaching up to failure and avala or something else? Again, it should be invalid, right? So let us see what is our program written. We are getting failure. So we have two cases where we need to check. 0 kante takko chna apde in chayali, 100 kante ekko chna apde what should we do, right? So let us go and check it now. First of all, here we have 80 and 100 and 100 and 100. Right? What should we check here? Distinction range and it is not just greater than 80, 80 to 100. So I need to modify this condition. Right? And marks less than or equal to 100. Right? So now if I give uh, like 100 and uh, 100 number is there, it will not pass this particular condition, right? So let us run and see. I'm giving 120. And then let's run this. What will be the output? There is no output. Because I have 100 kind of the in chair and live. 100 kind of the coach in chair and live. Right? So just try to understand this now. Marks 120. What is this if condition going to do? Line number 7. It will return false. And then where will it go next line? Which is the next line? It will be 9. So ninth line, will it be true or false? Again, this is also false. Next line, 11. True or false? False. Again, next line. Next line is 13th, not 14th. So 
ఇక్కడ కూడా ఈ కండిషన్ చెక్ చేయాలి రైట్ సో నా ఈ కండిషన్ ట్రూ ఆర్ ఫాల్స్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఫాల్స్ సో వెర్ విల్ ఇట్ గో నెక్స్ట్ ఇంకెక్కడికైనా వెళ్ళడానికి ఉందా మనకి వీ డోంట్ హ్యావ్ ఎనీ వేర్ సో ద ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఎగ్జిక్యూషన్ ఈస్ కంప్లీటెడ్ సో నా ఇన్వాలిడ్ అండ్ ప్రింట్ చేయాలంటే ఎక్కడ ప్రింట్ చేయాలి నేను so this is where we are going to have another uh, keyword which is called else so e value save kaakapothe we have to print something system dot out dot print and we are going to print invalid invalid marks now let's try to run this again ఇప్పుడు ఒకవేళ ఈ ఎల్స్ ఇఫ్ కానీ ఎల్స్ ఇఫ్ కానీ ఏవైనా ఫెయిల్ అయ్యాయి అంటే వేర్ విల్ ఇట్ గో నెక్స్ట్ ఇట్ విల్ గో టు లైన్ నెంబర్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ విచ్ ఇస్ ఎల్స్ ఎల్స్ లో ఇంకా కండిషన్ ఏమీ లేదు అక్కడి వరకు వచ్చిందంటే డెఫినెట్ గా ఎల్స్ లో ప్రింట్ అవుతుంది ఓకే నా లెట్స్ టేక్ నెగిటివ్ వాల్యూ అండ్ సి వెదర్ ఇట్ విల్ వర్క్ ఫర్ దెగిటివ్ వాల్యూ ఆల్సో సి నా నెగిటివ్ వాల్యూకి లైన్ నెంబర్ సెవెంటీన్ ట్రూ ఆర్ ఫాల్స్ ఫాల్స్ it will go to line number 9 true or false false next 11 true or false false next 13 true or false false next where will it go now it will go to line number 15 and 15 lo ena condition untunda do we have any condition there is no condition it will directly go into the next line which is 16 so this is how invalid marks are printed so if you minus 10 would print out unega maniki let's try to see this done minus 10 kuda maniki ippudu print ayindi clear everyone so we use if and else if else anadi like a common uh, terminology in almost like all the programming languages syntax so just a braces badalu manam tabs use cheyadam ilante untay gaani but usually we use this as, uh, the same way in all the programming languages and why do we use if else conditions if else is mainly used to control the flow next a line ki vellali annadi decide cheyadaniki maatrame we use uh, these statements if else and then if else ladder ani kuda antaru because does it look like a ladder ladder ante manaki multiple steps undadam right so if you see here ఇది ఒక స్టెప్ నైన్ ఈస్ వన్ స్టెప్ లెవెన్ ఈస్ వన్ స్టెప్ థర్టీన్ ఈస్ వన్ స్టెప్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ ఈస్ వన్ స్టెప్ సో అందుకని వీ కాల్ ఇట్ యాజ్ ఇఫ్ ఎల్స్ ల్యాడర్ క్లియర్ గైస్ ఎవ్రీ ఎవ్రీ వన్ ఎనీ క్వశ్చన్స్ యా ప్రవీణ్ సార్ యాక్చువల్లీ మీరు చెప్పిన సార్ ఇట్స్ లైక్ మెయిన్లీ యూస్ టు కంట్రోల్ ద ఫ్లో సో సారీ ప్రవీణ్ కెన్ యు రిపీట్ అగైన్ sir you said for only to con- if else is used for only control the flow no sir yes so actually why can't we use only if no even it is a condition right to get the marks in this yes. order you can use either only if or if else or if else if else alla mottham all different possibilities you can do that sir and the three possibilities man either na use it and we can we get the correct answer uh, correct output on no sir adhe a logic mana dani patti untundi indaka manam first only if conditions vaadam right కండిషన్స్ వాడినప్పుడు నంబర్ ఆఫ్ లైన్స్ ఎగ్జిక్యూట్ అయినవి ఎక్కువ ఉన్నాయి మనకు అవుట్పుట్ సిమిలర్ గానే వచ్చింది సో మనం మనం బిల్డ్ చేసే లాజిక్ ని బట్టి అది డిసైడ్ అవుతుంది సినారియో విత్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఆల్సో దెన్ విల్ సి ఓకే థ్యాంక్ యూ రైట్ ఓకే భావన సేస్ సార్ ఫర్ టెన్ ఆల్సో వి నీడ్ టు గెట్ యాజ్ ఇన్ వ్యాలీ ఎస్ వర్క్ అవుతుందేమో చూద్దాము టెన్ కి కూడా let me just change it to 10 and see ledha ok sir meere na cheppandi ippudu 10 ki line number 7 true or false yeah for minus 10 also uh, you can take either minus 10 or 10 for both for minus 10 this will be false this will be false this will be false yeah. yes ఇన్సైడ్ ది ఇఫ్ కండిషన్ 
what should we do now din ela modify cheyali we have to add the condition for zero also zero to 35 vastene it is failure right so and marks greater than or equal to zero now does this work bauna yes so since we made this condition uh, false it will go into else condition and then it will print the invalid marks right clear guys everyone any questions on uh, like if and else if uh, like in a simpler way we will discuss one uh, complex example also now so that in case we can have doubts now you can get clarity now mana we have already work just e-commerce application right e-commerce application lo when do we actually uh, use this kind of if else conditions thing shall we think of it mana ippudu varaku implement chesina functionality enti adding a product to the cart right cart lo ki oka kotta product ni eppudu add cheyali eppudu increment cheyali so now let's try to understand that scenario adding a item to cart adding a item an uh, adding an item annapudu like what are the possibilities guys nenu oka item ide add click chestanu what will happen will it just go and add uh, to the cart or will it do any condition checks for example meer swiggy theesukondi swiggy lo meer oka item kanipinchindi meer add and click chesaru what will happen it will go to check out and it will see alanti item already unda leda am i right so there are two possibilities what are those two possibilities first one emo item is already added right and inkokati item is not added till now so now you put based on these two conditions my implementation different ga untundi right For example, item add chale then only. What should uh, what should we do? We have to add the item and then set count to what should be the count? First time add chale sunte. It should be one. Now, अजय को ले second condition अन कोणे. Item add chale. Uh, sorry, sorry, my mistake. This is for the second condition. And the item we put work to add chale. First time add chale sam. అది ఒకవేళ ఐటమ్ ఆల్రెడీ ఉంది అనుకోండి మీరు మళ్ళీ యాడ్ అనే బటన్ క్లిక్ చేశారు వాట్ విల్ హ్యాపన్ yes it has to just increment existing item right so మనకి ఇక్కడ డిఫరెంట్ ఫంక్షనాలిటీ జరుగుతుంది ఇప్పుడు and does it happen only at this place or anywhere అలాగే ఇప్పుడు ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ మీరు స్విగ్గి లో యాడ్ బటన్ దగ్గర చూసారు ఆల్రెడీ యాడెడ్ ఐటమ్స్ కి అండ్ కొత్తగా ఉన్న ఐటమ్స్ కి విల్ దర్ బి ఎనీ డిఫరెన్స్ ఆల్రెడీ యాడెడ్ ఐటమ్స్ కి మీకు ప్లస్ అండ్ మైనస్ బటన్స్ చూపిస్తారు రైట్ నార్మల్ ఐటమ్స్ దగ్గర కూడా అదే కొత్త ఐటమ్ అయితే ఇట్ విల్ షో యాడ్ బటన్ రైట్ ఐమ్ ఐ డస్ ఇట్ మేక్ సెన్స్ గైస్ కెన్ ఆర్ యు ఎబుల్ టు థింక్ ఆఫ్ దట్ పర్స్పెక్టివ్ స్విగ్గి లో మీరు ఏదైనా ఒక కొత్త ఐటమ్ యాడ్ చేసేటప్పుడు యాడ్ అనే బటన్ ఉంటుంది అదే ఆల్రెడీ యాడ్ చేసిన ఐటమ్స్ అయితే ఎలా ఉంటుంది ఇట్ విల్ బి ప్లస్ అండ్ మైనస్ సో ఈవెన్ దాని విజిబిలిటీ అది కనిపించాలా లేదా అనేది కూడా ఎవరు డిసైడ్ చేస్తున్నారు ఇట్స్ ఆల్వేస్ ద కండిషన్ స్టేట్మెంట్స్ ఇఫ్ స్టేట్మెంట్స్ ఇఫ్ కానీ ఇఫ్ ఎల్స్ కానీ ఇవి యూస్ చేస్తే వీఆర్ మేకింగ్ దోస్ డెసిషన్స్ సో మన అప్లికేషన్ లో కూడా వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు యూస్ దీస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ థింగ్స్ అండ్ వీఆర్ ఆల్సో లైక్ గోయింగ్ టు యూస్ ఈవెన్ మోర్ లైక్ కాన్సెప్ట్స్ ఓవర్ దేర్ రైట్ నా వన్ మోర్ థింగ్ లైక్ లెట్ మీ జస్ట్ షో యూ the platform guys so we have uh, thought about a new approach where people can actually uh, get an interactive uh, like learning experience so that's the reason we came up with a new approach of uh, showing the content uh, on the platform so now to see the new content on the programming fundamental course you can go to the next uh, screen and if you open any task the uh, content will be in a conversation way you can see it here now so uh i'll tell you the uh, small story behind this implementation maybe me you can also give your inputs so what we thought was like instead of putting it like a normal text and everything we wanted to make it like a conversation 
ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ లెట్స్ టేక్ ఫోర్ పీపుల్ అర్ దేర్ ఫోర్ పీపుల్ ఏంటంటే ఒకరు బిగినర్ ఒకరు ఇంటర్మీడియట్ లెవెల్ అండ్ దెర్ ఇస్ అనదర్ వన్ హూ ఇస్ అడ్వాన్స్డ్ లెవెల్ ఇంకొకరు ఎక్స్పర్ట్ లెవెల్ సో నా వెన్ అ పర్టికులర్ డిస్కషన్ హ్యాపెన్స్ బిట్వీన్ దీస్ ఫోర్ పీపుల్ దాంతో ఇఫ్ యూ ఆర్ ఏబుల్ టు లర్న్ ఇట్ విల్ బి మచ్ ఎంగేజింగ్ అని వి థాట్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్ అండ్ దెన్ వి కేమ్ అప్ విత్ దిస్ అప్రోచ్ సో నా ఇఫ్ యూ సి హియర్ లైక్ డిస్కౌంట్ క్యాల్కులేషన్స్ కి హౌ డస్ దిస్ వర్క్ సో యూ కెన్ యాక్చువల్లీ గో త్రూ లైక్ there is a person called priya beginner she is actually starting the conversation saying like what is the problem that she wanted to solve and then there are different people who are actually giving their inputs and their explanation and everything so this way how uh, does the concept actually look like what do you uh, think about this approach will it be more engaging or will it is it better to have just normal text which is better guys conversation or uh, description so now we wanted to make this conversation more engaging so that's the reason we wanted to involve like a lot of real time uh, content also so ala we already did it for the discount functionality so now you can see here so first manaki initial ga indi just dani ela analyze cheyali enti anadu undindi now the same thing has gone into conversation mode next step so now since mana formula ent anad ready ayindi kabatti now we are just focusing on what is the input and what is the output so for that we are considering like a couple of use cases and our use cases ki like again the uh, person priya she calculated and she uh, saw that like this should be the expected output so that like manaku okay ee functionality is ee three use cases work aithe mana functionality will be done and again after that like going into uh, the next level where you wanted to print something or where you wanted to calculate something so you know like we will be having like all the concepts like one by one each and every concept and then we are going to like include more uh, like engaging content so this way uh, it will be more helpful for you guys to understand the concepts easily and also meer interview ki prepare ayyatapudu or like ever can explain cheyalanukunna kuda it will be much easier to understand this and use the same uh, kind of uh, vocabulary it will be much simpler and easier to explain to other people so now you might say like why are we having multiple contents like intermediate and oka person unnaru arnab and dhruv ani oka athane expert unnaru so even this also gives you a kind of uh, like exposure ante meeke ye content telusu for example meer cheppe intermediate level lo unda or expert level lo unda anadu kuda you get to know uh, those things easily does it make it better guys and functions ela use cheyali everything we have uh, created uh, this kind of approach now um and guys to add to what uh, vishwanath has said basically this approach of dividing things into multiple buckets where we have intermediate then we have answers as advanced and expert will also um, give you an advantage wherein if you say these answers in an interview or whenever you are talking in a conversation that will give a different um, impression on you ipudu for example like Uh, somebody in the interview has asked a particular question now there are three ways of uh, understanding what you're saying like based on your answers right so meer oka answer cheppar ankondi they will understand that you are at an intermediate level adhe like if you want to game it up ante inkoka level extra extra mile if you want to go and then uh, do it you can give a better answer like some like some person uh, like an advanced person uh, or like meer expert laga ichar ankondi then um, your uh, kind of the impact that you make in the interview would be much higher so guys uh, just wanted uh, like uh, oxari uh, you, you guys can uh, go through the existing tasks okay well already meer complete chesi untanu you can just open that uh, task again from the completed section you will see the latest content and then just go through it and also share your feedback with us on uh, like whatsapp or discord that will help us in making our content like even better for you guys uh, going forward right guys so uh, we have uh, done this for like uh, we have already unlocked uh, today's uh, task also so once you are done with all these three tasks even the discount calculation module will also be unlocked today and then you can try to uh, like just follow the same instructions and try to do uh, like uh, do it on your uh, editor it can be like online editor or it can be a uh, intellij or any uh, editor that you use or pycharm anything and all the code is available in all the three languages also
So once you, uh, if you can uh, give us any feedback, like we'll try to make sure, like whatever is uh, more valuable, we'll try to incorporate those things as well. So does this uh, look any, uh, interesting or uh, like what? Uh, what do you think, guys, about this particular approach? So now, if you see, like uh, we are actually discussing about discount calculation with product as input. So, hey guys, I'm working on a project to calculate discounts for different items in a store, but I'm not sure how to store all the information about each product, like its name, price, discount, and maybe even an image in any ideas, right? So now, the person with intermediate knowledge, which means like he's already, he's, uh, you can consider them as like three or four years of experience. So now, that's a great question, Priya. While variables are useful for storing single uh, values, they quickly become uh, cumbersome like when you need to track multiple pieces of information for a single item. Imagine trying to store name, price, discount, percentage, and image for hundreds of products using separate variables. It would be a nightmare to manage. So this is a kind of uh, like a opinion a, a three or four years experience person will have. Now see what kind of answer that uh, expert can give actually. So Arav is right. This is where the concept of classes and objects comes uh, becomes incredibly helpful. In object-oriented programming, we can create custom data types called classes that act as blueprints for objects. These objects can then store all the relevant information about a particular item in a neat and organized way. So does this give you some information? So this is a top level uh, like a description that uh, has gone through. Now, if you try to go to the next level, okay, I get the idea of representing products as objects, but I'm still a little unclear on how to do that. Could you show me a practical example? So now if you see, uh, like, absolutely clear. Let's uh, look at a concrete example in Java. Imagine we are working with two products, a t-shirt and a pair of jeans. Without using classes and objects, our code might look like this. You can see here. T-shirt price, t-shirt discount percentage, t-shirt name. Similarly, jeans price, jeans discount percentage, jeans name. And then for discount calculation also, you are doing it two, uh, in two different lines. For system dot uh, displaying also, you are doing it in two different lines again. So now, wow, that's a lot of variables. It seems a bit overwhelming to keep track of everything. Is there a way to simplify this? So this is where the concept of classes and objects come into picture. Now we can discuss about that uh, concept. And then you can see some examples about like how to actually create that uh, class, create a class of product and how to define these variables. And in different languages, how do we do that? So this way you will uh, go through an evolution of like a product uh, from uh, level zero to the next level. So this way uh, we wanted to make it more engaging. Yeah, Rinka. Uh, and uh, guys, like, can you share that screen? Yes. Yeah. So here, guys, actually three people are talking about the same concept, which is classes and objects, right? But what uh, understanding the intermediate person has is completely uh, different from what advanced or expert level has, right? So um, those kind of differences also you can actually bring into the conversation with your friends or, you know, with your teachers in your projects, etc. So try to understand those key differences, how an intermediate person could answer, how an advanced person could answer. But because, for example, uh, Visu, can you just go back a little where yes. the expert person is saying it's a blueprint? Uh, yeah, uh, just a second. This one, yeah. Right, so uh, the intermediate person is just telling like, yes, there is a problem for uh, storing all these as variables so that is why we need a different kind of concept right and uh, the expert is saying that is where the classes and objects come in and uh, it is the object oriented principle the programming and he mentioned a particular term here like blueprint for projects right so even though the concept is same the words that we use during explanation of the same concept will also make a lot of impact um, i mean a lot of difference so that is what uh, you can uh, get clearly based on this kind of learning yeah that's it Rizal. cool so guys, uh, today uh, what you can do is actually for the first four tasks, just go through this content and get clarity on variables, functions, classes, objects. And then you can also start uh, doing that on your code editor.